Did you know that a lot of billion dollar businesses that we know today started by getting laughed out of boardrooms? So here's the big question. How do you identify which one to kick to the curb and which one to join on their journey? Hey there, my name is Chris Graby and I help everyday investors learn how to navigate and understand the world of startup investing. I've invested in 25 plus startups and I'm here today to talk about how we identify and find the next billion dollar startup. We've all heard the startup term unicorn. Now this is a startup that crosses the $1 billion valuation mark. Now, one of the things that most people don't talk about is how hard it is for most of these startups in the early days and how often they get rejected. Let's dive into some companies that we all know and how hard their journey was at the very beginning. Let's start with Airbnb and Uber. Well, both of these startups, we all know them as household names today, but they got laughed out of the room when they started to talk to investors. If you take a second and think about it, complete strangers are gonna jump into your car or they're gonna sleep on your couch it was hard for some of those early investors to have vision to see around the corner because nothing like it had ever been done before. Another startup that had a really rocky road was Amazon. A lot of people don't know this, before Amazon, Jeff had an online auction site called Z Shops and it failed miserably. But for founders like Jeff, the failures help teach you so that you can be successful on your next venture and don't give up. Let's look at Apple and Steve Jobs. He got rejected a ton of times, but at the end of the day, he got the last laugh. Apple is the most profitable stock since 1926. Google, I mean, we all know Google, but the founders, they wanted to quit and they were willing to sell Google for a million dollars so that they could go back and focus on their schoolwork. And they offered it to a guy named George Bell and he turned them both down as a buyer of the company and also as an investor. Five months after that $1 million offer came, they raised another $25 million and the rest is history. Look, the road for startup founders is never easy and it's paved with those that have stories that they weren't able to find a way and to figure it out. But for those unicorn companies, the ones that we all know now that are worth billions of dollars, well, they have a lot of different things in common. And I wanna take a second and look at what these common characteristics are that these giants have in common so that it might help you, it might help me when I'm trying to find the next big startup that I think has the potential to reach a billion dollars. The first thing I always wanna make sure I look at is, and it's simple, but it's so true. Are they able to find the customer's pain point and solve it? Think about Google for a second. What did they do? They made searching the internet so much easier. Before it was a hodgepodge, it was all over the place. Google really made it super simple, easy, one bar across the top. What are you looking for? Let us know, we'll go find it for you and bring it back to you. Let's look at Slack massively huge company. They made it possible for simple communication to happen between team members. Very easy to organize. There was a problem and they solved it. And look at Uber. What does Uber do? They help us get a ride right then, right there. Open the app, boom, and they solve a problem. Now, if you can solve a problem, that's one of the big pillars that you need to have the potential to one day be a unicorn. Now, the next one, this is a really big one. You have to be able to scale your business. I'm talking massive scale, multiple millions of dollars of customers. Now, there is nothing wrong with building a decently sized local business. That is awesome. But if a startup can't scale and reach, like I said, hundreds of millions of people, then this is not something that potentially has the opportunity to become a unicorn down the line. If you invest in a company, you're not going to see those unicorn size returns. Let's talk about timing. Now, most of the unicorns that we all know, they took off because they hit the target market at the exact right time. Now, you may not know this, that there were other online streaming platforms before YouTube. There's Z.com and there was Active Movie. Broadband around the country didn't really hit its stride until about the early 2000s. These startups were just ahead of that, and so the adoption curve wasn't able to hit. What happens when more broadband, people start streaming online, apps start showing up on phones, people are watching videos on their computers? Well. 
2005 is when YouTube got started. They kind of hit the intersection and timing is right where it's at. Same thing with Uber, right? You had to be able to have an app on your phone to be able to do that. Well, if there weren't apps on phones, you weren't gonna be able to find a ride right there. So then they hit it, the timing at the right time, had the app, had the idea, could it scale? Yes, could they solve a problem? I think you get the idea of what I'm saying. So look, when you're looking to invest in a potential possible future billion dollar unicorn, you need to take a step back and you need to see how their timing is playing into the entire market. Are they too early right now? Are they right on time? Is this the, this is the moment? This is where it's at. Or did they miss the party and they fell too far behind and will never be able to gain traction down the line? Now, there's one thing that not a lot of people talk about, but that is luck. You have to have some luck. Now, I know as an investor, you want to go like, hey, but I want a guaranteed thing. Well, there's no guarantee in investing. I think we all know that. But a lot of times, yes, you can solve the problem. Yes, you can scale. Yes, the timing is right. Sometimes just an arms race. And maybe you get the money. Maybe you don't get the money. Maybe you get the audience. Maybe you understand the marketing. Maybe you don't. But look, a lot of it has to do with luck. A lot of these companies just got there because a couple lucky breaks went their way. And that's the way the ball bounced. They had the other factors, but then luck came in and sealed the deal for them. So the question is, is it even possible to identify if a startup will hit billion dollar status? You're looking at a company, they're doing a couple million dollars a year. It looks possible, but let's be honest, it really is virtually impossible. And I've had founders tell me that they are gonna be worth $1 billion someday. Good for them. If you know anything about founders, they're probably the most delusional people in the world and good for them. But as an investor, you have to look up and say, I don't know what can happen from here, but let's talk about what we do know. Today, right now, it looks like AI will probably be the next sector to produce more of the next billion dollar startups. The disruption is already here, but it's going to continue to disrupt. We're still just on the forefront of AI and it's literally changing the world as we know it today. If you're looking for the next big startup, the unicorn startup that you can potentially invest in, more than likely they're gonna have to have some sort of AI component that's not just built on the back of ChatGPT, that's also built internally, that they own the data, and then if they start to find traction, well, that is when they can get massive valuations from some of these huge tech companies that are throwing insane amounts of money around to acquire them. Here's a rule of thumb that I follow, right? And for you, maybe you can adopt this as well. Do not invest in anything that you do not understand. If you want to invest in AI, start learning. Start getting in, seeing the industry, seeing the space, learn what it's all about. And I often get asked this question, what if I don't invest in the earliest rounds? Is there a chance for me as an investor? Can I still get into these deals? Of course you can get in these deals, but don't get me wrong. The earlier you get in, obviously the lower the valuation of the company and you get the opportunity to kind of ride things up to the top as they continue to see success. But the other thing you got to think about is typically when you get in super early, there will also be dilution of shares every time that that startup raises. The earliest rounds, if you jump in at the very earliest rounds, maybe right after the friends and family, they're the riskiest rounds that you can jump into. So sometimes it's actually okay if you invest in a follow-up round or a second round after the startup has proven that the market actually indeed wants what they have. They can solve problems. They can scale. They understand what's happening in their market. Well, then you can know and say, okay, I feel comfortable and I can invest in this startup. If you're investing in a later round, that's okay. And if they're still growing and there's still tons of opportunity in the horizon, well, that's great news. You know, maybe you're getting in a couple rounds before the IPO or exit. Well, that is awesome. You're still in and have the opportunity to see some of the upside. Now, the other cautionary tale you have to be careful of, if a company is raising because the startup is on their deathbed and they're about to die, well, that's a round that you don't want to invest in and you want to run the other direction as fast as you possibly can. So in conclusion, if someone's telling you that they have a 100% guarantee that a startup that they've heard of or even their startup is going to hit unicorn status someday, hit that $1 billion valuation, I would say absolutely 100% do not listen to them. I would say they're full of it and they have no clue what they're talking about. The economy could change, the market could change, adoption could slow down. You just never know what could happen. And maybe they will be, but more than likely, they won't be. $1 billion status is extremely hard to achieve. And 
As a startup investor, if you hit one in your investing lifetime, you've done something so rare that most investors never actually achieve. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to stop searching for great startups. Go look for great startups. Do your homework. Find the ones that have the potential to solve a problem, to scale, that are right on time and have a little bit of luck on their side because eventually you never know. Maybe one of the startups that you invest in right now will one day hit unicorn status. Well, there you have it. I hope you find the startup that one day becomes a unicorn and you ride it all the way to the top. Hey, if you're new to the world of startup investing, I would love to invite you to join my free newsletter where each and every single week I'm sending out some of the top companies that I'm watching and that you could watch as well. It's my watch list. It's totally free. It's a gift for me to you. Click the link down in the description. Come join our community at the crowd and I'll send you an email right now. And with that being said, hey, if you like this video, I know you're going to love this one right here and you'll definitely love this one right here.